our colleagues in the office in Geneva for this opportunity to bring uh, this globally important and relevant issue to the audience in, uh, in Geneva. Uh, it still remains a new topic. So if you allow me, I will spend uh, a little bit of time uh, uh, showing you the scale and the importance of uh, plastics use um, in agri-food systems and or food and agriculture sector. I think trying to see why my yes. Uh, as uh, plastics became a pervasive issue in agriculture th through large-scale use, uh, I would say starting from uh, 60, 70, so it's uh, about 60 years ago, um, it, uh, it even resulted to the introduction of the terminology plastic culture in agriculture, specifically applied to the agricultural sector. Uh, because of its low cost, adaptable and uh, adaptability, plastic products became uh, present now in almost every part of the food system, from fishing nets, from fishing gear, to tree guards, to greenhouses. Um, the introduction of um, plastics in agriculture brought many benefits, and obviously the most important of them was uh, increasing production efficiency, reducing use of agrochemicals and uh, also contributing to the reduction of food uh, losses and waste. Uh, but one issue which uh, stays on the side of trade-offs of negative side is this practices often resulted in elevated and significant risk uh, to human and um, environmental health especially through the long-term use uh, of plastics and their accumulation in soils, the consequences uh, become um, really global and uh, lo global, local, and uh, obviously national. Uh, at FAO, the work uh, has been on plastics started uh, some time ago, but really the breakthrough was with the publication in 2021 of the global report on uh, plastics use in agriculture, which assess the scale of the problem, impacts, and also various approaches uh, to policy and practices uh, which are using uh, plastics. So our assessment indicated that on average, about 12.5 million of plastics is being used in uh, all agricultural subsectors. Majority of it, it's as you could see, almost 80%, is associated with crops and livestock, uh, followed by fisheries and aquaculture. And finally, some part is used in the, the minor part is used um, in forestry. Uh, important also to mention that about, if we can see the agri-food systems in its entirety, 37 million metric tons of plastics is used in packaging. So we are in, uh, when we speak about agri-food systems, we are talking about 40 million tons of plastics associated with food and agricultural sector. For comparison, 12.5 million is almost the same amount which enters on an annual base uh, to the oceans. I would, uh, I, I already mentioned uh, uh, the various benefits, but let me reiterate them here. Um, but also, um, let's speak about the trade-offs particularly. Uh, first, uh, majority of agricultural plastics due to various factors, primarily contamination, are not being adequately recycled and disposed, especially when we speak about developing countries. And our speakers will obviously speak about good experiences, but uh, the global picture is certainly alarming. Uh, plastic contamination in soils is an increasingly recognized problem, especially through degradation and intentional introduction on micro and uh, we increasingly speak about nanoplastics in uh, the food value chains with important uh, consequences uh, for food safety. Uh, 
uh, nanoplastics and microplastics has been discovered almost in all agricultural, uh, let's say, milieus, livestock, milk, vegetables, fruits, plants. And I would say even in human placenta, um, the recent research discovered uh, um, nanoplastic particles. Um, over continuous use of agricultural plastics, and especially we learned this um, uh, in some regions of the world, high accumulation reverses the trend when it was introduced in the first place, leading to the decreased yields. Finally, as you know, most traditional plastics are um, oil and gas. Uh, the stocks, feed stocks are coming from oil and gas industry. Obviously, there is association um, of plastic use with G, uh, GHG emissions. Uh, here is, uh, I would not go very deep into the slide, but you will see that, again, there is a diversity of plastic use in agriculture, especially in the production side which include uh, use of fertilizers, um, use of mulching films, pesticide containers, different boxes which are already used um, in the field, and then the list goes on. So our report identified uh, some uh, priority uh, products in this respect, and I think it's, it's also useful to keep in mind um, when we speak about the diversity of plastics in agriculture. As in uh, plastics and other sectors, there is only one way to deal with the problem is the uh, approach, a circular economy approach. We have to start from substitution or refusal up to least preferred option uh, recovery. So prevention is obviously a fundamental and particularly in the agricultural sector, there are many opportunities to address this through various agroecological approaches and different other practices, but not, not always and not everywhere. Uh, a very uh, brief glimpse of what uh, FAO as an organization is doing. Uh, we created a mechanism of uh, interaction, knowledge exchange and uh, joint collaboration across different uh, subsectors and also different uh, thematic divisions. Uh, for example, the fisheries and aquaculture division, which has a long history of working on marine litter microplastics is currently implementing a glow litter project um, with uh, WMO, uh, which is looking at the reduction of uh, plastic litter from uh, fishery sectors and uh, different maritime sectors. Uh, FAO developed voluntary guidelines on marking, uh, marking fishing gear, which is one of the major policy instruments to address abandoned, loss, and discarded uh, fishing gear in the marine and ocean environment. Um, we also implementing a Global Goals Gear Initiative. There is increasing body of work uh, by our colleagues in the uh, Codex, Planeta uh, uh, Codex Alimentarius um, the, and Food Safety Division, uh, looking at the food safety implication of plastics in packaging and, uh, and also in other environments. Uh, land and Water Division, uh, which leads our work on uh, soil pollution and Global Soil Partnership, is also looking um, at, at the knowledge side uh, of uh, plastic pollution. Plant Production Protection Division uh, has a body of work on pesticide containers and also application of agroecological approaches. And finally, um, our joint center is uh, in Vienna, is looking at the uh, use of nuclear techniques uh, to uh, trace uh, microplastic pollution in different environments. I think I would not uh, speak very much on this slide. I think Kavi already presented the mandate given to, to us uh, by FAU members includes three major uh, streams of work, um, scientific assessments, uh, policy coherence, work on the ground, through um, enhanced intersectoral cooperation, because particularly on this issue, cooperation between ministries of environment, ministries in agriculture, and in some instances, all other ministries is fundamental. Uh, FAO, we started developing now a voluntary code of conduct, and on May 25th, uh, we will be conducting informal um, briefing to members in Rome 
So I also encourage colleagues in Geneva to, to link to this informal briefing. And finally, Intergovernmental Negotiating Committee where FAU is an observer. And I think that's the rest of my presentation will be specifically on um, this agenda item. While voluntary code of conduct is our important contribution to INC, INC as, as you know and understand is a, another, it's a parallel process where we are observers and our mandate is to support negotiators, support members to understand and to uh, consider um, important issues of plastics and agriculture. Um, we have been uh, part of the discussion from the beginning, from the first intergovernmental meeting in Uruguay, and uh, we are planning to attend the next one in May, uh, first week of June in Paris. Um, we are bringing to the negotiation table the issues, uh, basically voice on agriculture and food security, food safety and nutrition in these discussions. And if you allow, I, uh, Dominic, I'm looking at the time, uh, how much time I have that uh, we, are, we have great presentation. Uh, do we have five minutes? Good. Yes, you have five minutes. You have five minutes left. Uh, thank you. Uh, so this is evolving picture, but I just want to give you a flavor of uh, particular entry points uh, we have with the agriculture to the uh, international legally binding instruments, and there are many. Uh, currently, uh, we uh, countries uh, submitted their comments uh, and proposals for potential co-obligations. Why I'm saying it's an evolving field. Um, the objective, which I think there is a lot of convergence um, among members, that the objective will be. Uh, around the language of ending plastic pollution, protecting human health and the environment from its adverse effects throughout the life cycle of plastic. So you already see the message of circularity and understanding, and this is also the mandate of UN Environment Assembly, which triggered this process. And I think from my intervention before you see that there are, this is also the approach we take um, of circular use of plastics in agriculture. Among co-obligations, uh, I list uh, some of them and all of them directly and indirectly concern plastics in agriculture. For example, in many instances, as in, uh, let's say, packaging, many of plastic products used in agriculture are single use. Therefore, we have to discuss um, issue of the uh, issue of substitution reduction recycling content in uh, in plastic mulch. Uh, we have to consider especially this uh, uh, particularly problematic practices where we are intentionally introducing microplastics in our soils as uh, plastic coated fertilizers. But again, uh, there are very few developments at the moment. Alternatives are limited in this area. There is another also problematic use is um, sewage sludge, which is often contaminated with microplastics, which we're distributing in the fields to, uh, to improve nutrient um, content and soils. We have to consider what alternatives we have. Obviously the issue of waste management, as I mentioned, um, and I think our colleagues, especially today, will give you um, some examples, national examples of sustainable, agricultural waste management practices, uh, which we have to um, scale up and uh, promote in many developing countries. There are alternatives to plastic mulch, uh, for example, using cover crops, not fall crops. So it's a very complex as all agricultural sector, complex, um, sophisticated, very diversified systems where we have to be very careful and to bring knowledge and uh, experience um, to this uh, process from, uh, from the perspective of agri-food systems. FAU agenda, and this is my last slide, uh, if you allow me, at, again, as an observer, I reiterate, FAU is not a negotiator. We support our members. 
but our agenda will uh, consist of four major, if you wish, pillars or lines of argument that we will support our members to ensure that international legally binding instrument considers benefits, but also trade-offs and sustainability of plastic use and agri-food systems. And this is very important for us as a part of wider agri-food system transformation towards efficiency, inclusivity, resilience, and sustainability. This is a for your mantra uh, for our approach, as some of you know, better environment, uh, better production, better livelihoods, um, better nutrition while leaving no one behind. Uh, we will promote holistic approach, 6 refuse, redesign, reuse, recycle, and recover, and importance also evidence-based, science-based approach to plastic um, to plastic management and also microplastics in agri-food systems. Uh, we uh, want to discuss with members, given the specificity as I, and, and as you see complexity of the sector, that potentially agriculture should be treated uh, in the context of sectoral approach, which is also coming up in the discussions uh, of um, international legally binding um, instrument to consider um, especially um, the dimension of reduction of release of plastics to water, soil, and air. And finally, we see this as an important uh, contribution uh, to negotiators that in addition already recognized um, by, by members of the importance of implementing and enforcing voluntary guidelines on marking fishing gear. Also, we will be developing voluntary code of conduct which provides specificity and support, especially to ministers of agriculture, but also other stakeholders at the national level in using plastic sustainably in uh, our sector. Thank you very much. <clears throat> well, thank you very much, Lev, indeed, for a very interesting presentation, again, for presenting the the magnitude of the of the issue we are you the members are, are dealing with uh, with our support the also the the work of FAO that really cuts across the organization involving so many uh, divisions uh, and offices across the house and then for for really describing how the treaty may and I I, I noticed the, the use of the word may address sustainable use of plastic in agriculture the call for careful approaches and uh, and finishing by by really presenting the role of FAO as an observer within our mandate in uh, support of the uh, members uh, in the context of uh, INC2. So thank you very much uh, Lev and uh, I will now move to our next speaker uh, Mr. Ronan Vano, the Director General of Adi Valor, who will present the importance of the extended producer responsibility schemes and the experience of Adi Valor uh, in France in that respect. Uh, Mr. Vano, uh, the floor is yours. Do we have Mr. Vano? Sorry. Huh? Oh, to fix uh, Mr. Uh, Vano, uh, I would love, like to give the floor to uh, Mr. Xian Yangji. Uh, counselor at the Mission of the People's Republic of China in Geneva, will introduce the policies and regulations adopted in China on the usage of merge uh, film. Mr. Shen, the floor is yours. Okay, uh, thank you. Yeah, your microphone is okay. Okay, Just fine. To speak. Okay. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you, uh, and dear Mr. Dominic, dear friends and colleagues. Agriculture plastic film is an important agricultural production material. In recent years, in order to prevent and control the pollution caused by residual agricultural film 
question. We have insisted on law enforcement and policy incentives in China. We have established a scientific system for the use and the recycling of agricultural film. And the National Agricultural Film Recovery Rate has remained stable at over 80%. First, we have improved the policy regulations. We have implement, implemented the requirements of laws, such as the Soil Pollution Prevention and Control Law and the law on the prevention and the control of solid waste pollution. Relevant departments have jointly issued the management measures for agricultural plastic film and the opinions on accelerating the prevention and the control of agricultural plastic field pollution. We have established a regulatory system covering the entire chain of agricultural field production, sales, use, and recycling, and build a multi department collaborative governance mechanism. Second, we have strengthened the regulatory enforcement. We have promoted the revision of the mandatory national standard for the ethylene blown agricultural mulch field and increase the minimum nominal thickness of the mulch film to 0.01 millimeters. Relevant departments have issued the notice on further strengthening the enforcement of agricultural plastic film and the notice on publishing typical cases of enforcement and the supervision of agricultural plastic film. We further strengthen the enforcement of regulatory measures for agricultural plastic film and crack down severely on non-standard plastic films entering the market and being used in the field. Third, we are promoting the scientific use and the recycling of mulch film. Since 2017, we have implemented a mulch film recycling campaign with a focus on establishing 100 key counties for recycling in the Northwest region. We have promoted the use of standard mulch films mechanized the collection and professional recycling and established a government-guided and market-led recycling network system. So starting from 2022, we have launched pilot projects for the scientific use and recycling of large film, focusing on regions with high uses of plastic films. We are promoting the use of high strength thickened mulch films and fully biodegradable mulch films and exploring the establishment of long-term mechanisms of mulch film pollution control. Fourth, we are strengthening monitoring and evaluation. We are establishing 500 national monitoring points for residual mulch film across the country, with a focus on monitoring the use, recycling, and the residual conditions of agricultural plastic film on farm land. This allows us to timely grasp the dynamic trends in pollution changes. In 13 key provinces that use plastic fields extensively, such as Gansu, Shandong, we are establishing evaluation and application basis for fully biodegradable mulch films. We are conducting continuous evaluations of product function, suitability, safety, 
and promoting product improvements and performance enhancements. In the future, we will further collaborate with relevant departments to strengthen the joint enforcement of agricultural firm regulations, improve the system for recycling, utilization, and classification of waste mulch fields, and effectively prevent and control white pollution on farm land. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Shen, indeed, for, for presenting the, the efforts that are ongoing in China, and especially the work that is uh, ongoing in terms of uh, uh, policy regulations and incentives on the sale, use, and recycling of plastic film uh, with already a clear impact, uh, which you referred to, uh, for also briefing us on the pilot projects uh, that are ongoing in regions with uh, high use of plastic films and, and for, I think, referring to the, the multi-departmental uh, nature uh, of, of the work that is ongoing. Thank you uh, so much, uh, Mr. Chen. And I will now try again <laughs> to go uh, to uh, Mr. Uh, Vano uh, from Adivalor, who is going to uh, talk on the importance of the extended producer responsibility. Uh, Mr. Vano, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you. Sorry for my late arrival. Uh, so uh, I will present you uh, some uh, the, the the French uh, the French scheme for uh, uh, agricultural uh, waste. Uh, I will share if I can my presentation. Um, You see my screen? Yes. 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 Okay. So, uh, how does it work? Uh, our scheme is uh, quite simple. Uh, I mean, uh, the financial uh, flow is uh, the eco fee. Uh, the eco fee is included in the price of the products, either products that we uh, have the, the, the packages. Uh, or the products with the that are plastic like uh, films and uh, nets and uh, pipes and so on so uh, the coffee is given to Adivalor to uh, to fit, to finance uh, the whole uh, process and uh, the the farmers are giving their waste to collection points uh, and uh, it's really important that farmers are sorting their waste before we have 22 uh, types of waste that are sorted by, by farmers. And after that, I develop take care of the, the waste and uh, send them to the, the recycling uh, units, which is the, the, our goal is to go to, to recycling first. Uh, so, uh, the sorting is uh, made by farmers, the collection is supported by distributors, and the removal, the transport, and the, tra the treatment is ordered by a developer. And uh, the financement is, the, is done by the, the ECOFI. Uh, so, a developer uh, was created in 2001. Uh, it's a non profit private company. And uh, it's really important that we have an interprofessional governance, uh, a shared responsibility uh, between farmers, uh, distributors, and uh, manufacturers, uh, which are all shareholders. And uh, since the beginning, it's really important to have everybody around the table to discuss and to uh, create uh, this system and to make it work. Uh, our vision is to have zero plastic waste on farms, and that's it. Uh, some guidelines, the shared responsibility, I said, the, the fact that we are not for profit, also, also the transparency. Uh, we really want to uh, be clear on what we are doing, and uh, we don't uh, hide anything uh, because we are publishing our financial data, we are publishing every data that we have. Uh, also, we have decided to, to, to uh, create a national technical setup, but 
we are uh, working at the local level to organize uh, collection and uh, and uh, transport and treatment. Uh, what is our scope? Our scope is that we have uh, every pro every packaging coming from uh, plant protection products, fertilizer products, seeds, uh, and also hygiene products. And we have also used plastics like uh, film, baled wine, uh, netting, pipes, uh, and so on. So we have 22 types of weights that we are managing. Uh, it's really important to have a close cooperation with regulatory service and with the, the, the French authority. And uh, we have really a good relationship with the, the French authorities and uh, the, the, the uh, Adivalor is uh, mentioned in the AGEC law, which is law uh, that our uh, uh, how can I say that in English? The, 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 this law is uh, giving the, the big guidelines for EPR scheme. So uh, we are uh, in this law and uh, we have a, a special uh, agreement with the French Ministry of the Environment. We have also a close partnership with recyclers and waste companies. Uh, we are working with 30 recyclers uh, 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 10 in France and the other uh, across Europe. And we are working with 70 waste companies uh, to collect, to store, and to, to recovery uh, our waste. Okay, figures. Uh, uh, our, uh, we have uh, around uh, 120 tons agri waste to recover. 22 waste streams, as I said. Our average collection rate is uh, 78%. And we are re recycling more than 90% of what we are collecting. Uh, we have made some uh, life cycle uh, analysis and uh, it's around 70,000 tons of CO2 saved. Uh, we have big uh, logistical organization because we need to manage around uh, 45,000 collection requests per year. The main challenge is for the future, uh, we need to go on with the arrangement of the collection scope. Uh, we need to work on recycling capacities because we have not enough recycling capacities in France for uh, agri waste. And uh, it's important because uh, if we have uh, less di distance, uh, we can have a better uh, uh, equa equation for the, the CO2 emission. We have to work on eco-design for sure. And we have some regulation uh, challenges because uh, the, the waste regulation is uh, always moving and we have lots of things that will uh, happen in the next years in France and in Europe. So uh, the enlargement of the collection scope uh, next year in 2023, we will add the animal nutrition um, uh, system. Uh, it means that we will add, add more than 10,000 tons of waste to a river. We will also add the professional horticultural plots. It's around 4,000 tons additional agri waste to recover. And we have several pilots ongoing on insect proof nets, on non woven films, or on other irrigation pipes, but also on all the packaging. Uh, but the, the, the aim is that uh, we have uh, every plastic waste uh, at farm level in our scope. Uh, we have four new recycling units that uh, will start between 2022 and 2024. Uh, we have uh, Plastic Clean, which will start uh, next month. Uh, and uh, this unit will be dedicated to mulching film, which is a film that is very hard to recycle because it's very dirty. 
full of uh, water, sand, and uh, and uh, grass, and so on. Uh, we have uh, Rossi West, which is dedicated to bale net and twine. Uh, it has started in uh, 2020 in uh, September, and uh, quite quite hard these days because uh, it's a new process and uh, it needs to be uh, fine-tuned and uh, it's uh, the, the start of a new uh, unit is always uh, uh, quite difficult. And we will have an, a new unit also dedicated to big bags uh, in 2023, uh, which will be which will be with the group Novus. And we will have also a new unit dedicated to stretch film uh, in uh, Brittany. So uh, lots of new uh, recycling units, new capacities, and it will be uh, very great because we will be able in 2024 to recycle 80% of uh, what we are doing in France. So it will be better for the, for the, the number of kilometers that we uh, make our waste done. Eco design is also a big challenge because uh, it's uh, clearly uh, the trend that we have to follow. So we start eco modulation in 2023. So it's a bonus malus system on fees. Uh, the aim is to support PCR integration and support recyclability. And we also have really close partnership with industrials. Uh, in closed loop working groups, in pilots, and we are investing more than 1 million euro uh, since uh, 2020, and we will increase the budget uh, for the next three years. And the regulatory, uh, as I said, is also, is also a challenge because you have lots of uh, new uh, law uh, you have lots of uh, new, uh, there in France, the AJEC law uh, is uh, giving the guidelines on EPR schemes, and uh, there will be a new EPR on industrial packaging in uh, 2025. And you have the future EU, EU regulation on packaging, and the future waste directive and the future EU regulation uh, on eco design. So lots of new uh, regulation. So we want to uh, go on with voluntary commitment and agreement with French authorities. And uh, it will be uh, lots of talks because we will need to, uh, for sure, increase the quality and the performance of the system. That's it. Uh, so my conclusion is that uh, the system is working because you have a close cooperation between stakeholders. It's really important to have everybody around the table, uh, distributors, farmers, industry, industry manufacturers, and also authorities. And uh, we have a specific step-by-step -step approach. Uh, agriculture is a very specific uh, do domain topic. And uh, for sure, we have uh, a very good performance because we have a proactive commitment. And uh, that's the, the, the aim of this system. Thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, Mr. Vano, indeed, for presenting the Adivalor French uh, experience, uh, the national collection schemes, the, the the, I think multi-stakeholder uh, uh, efforts you are undertaking, the, the strategy and the, the, I would say the results, which you have already, but also the, the challenges uh, for the future in terms of more collection, more recycling capacity, co-design. Uh, and, and then this point on the, um, on the regulatory framework, uh, the complex regulatory frameworks which you are dealing with, which is indeed very important. So uh, there is a, a rich uh, Q&A uh, that is ongoing. So there has been already a question addressed to you. So I will ask you to, to reflect on it. And after the other speakers, uh, we will be coming back to you. And basically there was a comment saying that uh, Adivalor is a great model. What adaptation would be required 
to make it workable in developing countries. So you have about you have a couple of minutes to reflect on that and come up with a with a comprehensive, clear response that can be implemented. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm sorry, Mr. I, can't, I can't stand there, but my colleague Pierre Etienne Janton is here and he will be able to, to answer to this question. Excellent. Excellent. Very good. And now I would now like to invite Miss Anne-Marie Bolland, the principal consultant at RM Consulting Group uh, in Australia, to present a case study from Australia on policy recommendations for interventions to improve the sustainability of critical agricultural uh, plastics. Thank you. Uh, and also thank you very much for the opportunity to present some of the recent work we've undertaken in Australia on agriculture, fisheries and forestry plastics. Uh, first of all, RMCG is an environmental and agricultural consulting firm, so we're not representing any views of the um, Australian government. We're more a research and engagement uh, uh, body. Uh, I have a background in agricultural science focused on sustainable practices and resource use efficiency, and my colleague Isabel, who will also be presenting, is an environmental scientist with a background in resource recovery. I'd also like to acknowledge the broader team um, within RMCG, but also a number of sub-consultants sub that we have worked with to, that have contributed to this work, and also acknowledge the First Nations people as traditional owners on the land on which we reside. So I think it's already been mentioned that dealing with plastic in the agricultural sector is a very complex or wicked problem uh, with many solutions. The work we are describing today, um, Isabel, if you could just go back. Yeah, we are describing today sits within an Australian national policy framework and global initiatives such as the UN Sustainable Development Goals. There's a range of other activities being undertaken in Australia. So today we're just presenting a snapshot of some of the research that we've been involved with and that has been supported through AgriFutures Australia and also the Australian government. The agriculture industry has its own specific needs and challenges that are amplified when we consider plastic waste. Challenges include a variety of plastic waste streams, a large number of businesses that are dispersed, meaning that collection and logistics are difficult, particularly in a country as large as Australia, uh, and also a lack of pre-processing mechanical and advanced technology infrastructure. It's also important to note that uh, plastic use is increasing, uh, largely due to the intensification of production and also protection that's required with changing climate and extreme uh, weather events. Over the past couple of years, we've been working with the agriculture industry to develop a roadmap. And the roadmap has focused on better describing the problem of waste, identifying some solutions, and also determining what industry needs to do within a 10 year timeframe. The roadmap was developed by industry for industry with RMCG facilitating the process and engagement with more than 300 industry representatives. Importantly, the roadmap links to other Australian waste policy, although to date plastics in agriculture has not been the major consideration with consumer and industrial plastics receiving uh, much more attention. The roadmap applies the waste hierarchy, which we've already touched on, uh, and principles of circularity with the objective to encourage industry to move up the hierarchy. What this means in terms of managing plastics includes designing out plastics in some systems, we've already heard about cover cropping, and moving into options for reuse and recycling. Our least preferred option is on-farm disposal. However, it, it is in, realistically in the short term, um, it's, it's something that we, we need to address and an option may be responsible land filling rather than on-farm disposal. It also highlights that the solutions for each step of the hierarchy are required at the moment and also into the long term to ensure that we have sustainable management of plastics. 
It's important that we understand the scale of the problem. And I think uh, we talked about uh, uh, volumes of 12 million uh, volumes of uh, million tonnes of um, plastic produced in agriculture globally. In Australia, we're, we're just a drop in the ocean, about 100,000 uh, tonnes per annum that's that's um, generated. However, it's, it, is, it is worth looking at how um, we describe the sector production, uh, also the plastic uh, streams that are produced, and also their management methods, because this can help us uh, work out where we should apply our efforts. Important figures to note is that horticulture uses the most in Australia. Um, this is expected as it's more intensive and requires greater crop protection. Protective films are a major waste stream and we've already touched on those, particularly um, mulch, uh, soil mulch and also crop covers. At end of life, we have the largest volume of material remaining on site presenting uh, significant environmental risks. Uh, and it's also interesting to note that we have small volumes that are being recycled with a great need for a range of in interventions to facilitate better management. So the roadmap that's been developed and recently launched by AgriFutures helps industry determine what needs to be done to improve waste management. Activities are focused on four key pillars uh, that describe the why and how related to knowledge, behaviour change, partnerships and research and development, all issues that we've heard uh, are really critical to solving some of these um, major problems. The roadmap focuses on industries working together and demonstrating commitment through industry sector plans. Importantly, we already have some of the solutions in place and um, I'll hand over to Isabel who will drill down a little bit and talk about some of these solutions that we've already been working on. Thanks, Anne-Marie. Yeah, so to follow on from the sort of overarching um, options, looking at the why and the how for required practice change, the supporting research that we've produced has looked at more practical solutions at a few different levels. So to start on in this slide, from the extensive engagement, as well as literature reviewed, the research that's presented here is more of a consolidated repository of available options for improving the agricultural waste management. The importance of gathering all of these existing options is to highlight where there are considerations to move up the hierarchy, such as avoiding a plastic, a plastic plant support and using, for example, hemp or sisal string, or encouraging a system where you lease or reuse specific crates or pallets. But by mapping out some of the ideas that are currently happening in isolation, we can also see where there's similarities between other agricultural industries and therefore a need for collaboration. But what we can also say with this list is, whilst there's many options available, the current culture, the regulatory landscape and the financial incentives are not driving these options to become mainstream practice change just yet. The Australian main problem plastic is highlighted in the Sankey diagram that Anne-Marie showed are focused around plastic mulch, horticultural netting, as well as fishing and aquaculture gear. So to develop an option from a long list, we really need to look at uh, more further analysis. So in the case of plastic mulch or soil mulch and the preventative option of using certified soil biodegradable mulch, our research has shown that material in Australia is used in a range of different horticultural crops from vegetables to fruit, but also across a range of different climatic zones and soils. And so rather than just looking at a cost benefit analysis or at what cost a certified soil biodegradable mulch may become cost competitive, the research has explored other types of barriers. So including things like reduced flexibility in performance throughout the crop cycle, as well as the installation timing and also their incompatibility with certain fumigation practices. So these barriers as a whole, along with the obvious cost increase, must all be addressed for a solution to be properly adapted. In the case for fisheries and aquaculture, we have done some deep diving into the problems here. 
what we've found is that composition and management are difficult and often quite distinctly different from other types of agriculture. We've researched where plastic gear type is used by a specific industry. And this highlights that certain fisheries and aquaculture industry use a specific type of gear. So for example, uh, feed and air pipes are commonly used by aquaculture. And so a redesign or a recycling system approach in a closed loop system with this specific industry is suitable. Whilst other gear types, such as tubs, boxes, containers and ropes are used throughout by many different types of fisheries and aquaculture industries. So a collaborative approach here, potentially even linking in with the agricultural systems would be beneficial. Another part of this research looked at where plastic variables and how these really determine the actual avoidance and recycling solutions that are available, or in many cases in aquaculture and fisheries where they're not available, highlighting really a strong need for technological advances as well as significant infrastructure. In Australia, we have a good example of this in Port Lincoln. So one of our largest ports that uh, supports a range of different fisheries, but also a range of different aquaculture. And this um, cross industry uh, system has collaborated to invest in aggregation infrastructure as well as sorting capabilities and has through that enabled to attract some recycling processes. It's in its initial phases, but it shows that where you have that collaborative approach, you look at a port and location based generation point, there is a pathway. As Adi Valor very elegantly has summarized, addressing plastic in agriculture on that large scale is very well done so through a product stewardship scheme. IMCG has been working with the Australian government for the last three years to develop a, an approach for the Australian landscape. Here we've found that the quality and the quantity of plastic naturally will determine the viability of the logistics of such a scheme. Therefore, some plastics are probably more suited to this than others. As we've heard from Emory, that Australia is a really large country and we don't have relatively that much plastic waste. So having the ease of a one-stop drop-off location has been critical, emphasizing that a holistic approach is preferred. As this slide illustrated currently, there's several different schemes operating. And so moving to an umbrella system, as we've seen in the example with Advalor, is a recommended approach. So we haven't got much time, and I'd just like to say thank you for the opportunity to showcase some of the work, some of the research, as well as some of the strategic elements that we've been developing here in Australia. And if you wish to read any of this further, these links here will be hyperlinked in a PDF version, which we will share. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Ms. Bolland and Ms. Axel for your, for your presentation, for, for indeed, again, describing the magnitude of the, of the problem in, um, in Australia. I thought the, the diagram which you presented uh, was, was very telling, especially pointing to the impact of the horticulture sector, uh, but not only. Uh, also, uh, for, for presenting the, the roadmap for, for waste and, uh, and resource recovery, uh, which, as you said very well, has been developed by industry for industry, therefore. Uh, I mean, really a, a partnership with your 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 uh, research and engagement body, which I think is very very interesting. And then, of course, for describing a number, uh, a range of of, of uh, opportunities which uh, which exist to to handle this situation. So, thank you so much for that. Uh, and I will now move to our next speaker, uh, Mr. Abubakar Bama and Musa will share with us the perspective of the Nigerian Young Farmers Network. Mr. Moussa, the floor is yours. Thank you very much uh, for giving me this opportunity to speak on behalf of the uh, Young Farmers in Nigeria and Africa as well. Uh, let me share what I have here with you so that uh, Okay. 
Okay. I uh, hope you can see my screen. Not yet, but I guess it's coming. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It arrived in Geneva safely. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I can go ahead now, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, please. Okay, uh, basically here in Nigeria, we have uh, two types of agricultural plastic used in, in Nigeria. We have the agricultural chemical plastic inputs uh, widely used by farmers during both the dry season and wet season farming. Uh, and this Thank you, Newton. Uh, Mr. Musa, you are frozen. <clears throat> yes, you can all read the slides. <laughs> I guess Mr. Musa is coming back. Yes, you are back. You are back, but we need to go back to the previous slide because we we lost, I think, your presentation of the of the previous slide. We missed. So. Oops. No, he disappeared. We seem to have an issue with Nigeria. So uh, while we try to reconnect Mr. Musa, uh, perhaps we can go uh, we can go to some of the of the questions. I must say there has been a very rich dialogue in the in the in the chat. Uh, he's back. He's back. Mr. Musa, you are back. But but we can't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. You have to unmute Mr. Musa. Oh. Yeah, we can hear you. Please go ahead. Let me let presentation. Hello. Please go ahead. Okay, sir. Oh. So is the presentation up, right? Yes. Okay. As I'm saying, uh, how plastic uh, 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 agricultural plastic we use in Nigeria here, we have uh, two types of uh, agricultural plastic used in Nigeria. We have the chemical plastic inputs, which are widely used by farmers uh, during the bud, uh, dry, and uh, wet season. And this chemical comes in plastic containers and are often uh, disposed uh, improperly, leading to the environmental pollution. And the other one, we have a mulch and uh, primarily used for growing uh, food and vegetable crops over the extensive uh, areas in Nigeria here. So uh, what is happening here is uh, most, if you can see a picture here, I have this picture here. I, I snapped a period picture from a warehouse where government were disposing these inputs to the farmers here in Nigeria. So, uh, and the mismanagement of this input uh, cause uh, soil pollution, uh, the agricultural plastic that are left in the soil uh, uh, microplastic are releasing to harmful chemicals into the soil. And secondly, we still have the water pollution, which agricultural plastic can also pollute the waterways properly disposed. And uh, we have an air pollution, we have a visual pollution and wild, uh, wildlife farms, which are another harmful to the, to, to, to the, to the, to the forestry as well and uh, wild animals. So uh, we have a best practice and a project to address the plastic plastic agricultural uh, plastic pollution here in Nigeria. Uh, for, the for the past 10 years, uh, government have come in to intervene uh, in the farmers, sec farm agricultural sector here in Nigeria, have a program called uh, the Anko Borrowers. Uh, from 2016 up to date, government have injected almost $3, million, $3 billion into agricultural sectors. And what they did to farmers normally is they give an input to each and every farmer per hectare. So basically what they give as an input, they give almost five plastic containers of chemicals, instead of the herbicide, pesticide, or liquid fertilizer, came in all plastic containers. 
And you know, agricultural plastic containers are not more like uh, the other uh, plastics that are, can easily be recycled. This is like chemical plastics. And as well, these people in the village and the rural farmers uh, use this plastic for their domestic consumption. Some use it for water, some keep at home and all these things. We can, can cause a very serious damage. So uh, that's the reason in circulation here in Nigeria, we have over 60 million plastic containers are in circulation from for good seven years which directly the government are involved in supplying these kind of containers to farmers. We are not looking at retrieving all these this, this containers back to the, to the producers or to recycle it. So which is a very serious problem. That's the reason we come up with a model to see how we can uh, have a, a very good recycling mechanisms to retrieve back these plastics and uh, return it back to the producers and have a collection centers in the rural area. You know, the population of Nigeria here is so alarming. We have almost 200 million populations, and 60% of this population were youth. So, and these youths, most of them, 30 to 20% are agriculturalists or young farmers there here. So, we are looking for a way to have a mechanism to inject more innovations to create back all this deployment. So, secondly, we have to create an enable environment for education. And all these farmers must come from the rural areas without a, a, a modern education. You have to come down to their to their rural uh, languages to explain all these things to them, to understand the, the benefits and the, the disadvantage of using all this plastic in their in their farms. So uh, the role of uh, young farmers uh, in finding sustainable solution in the management of agri plastic. Uh, we are looking at the innovation because we believe young people are more innovative and they have a lot of idea to tackle this kind of uh, uh, plastic uh, pollutions in agriculture. So we have to create a lot of advocacy collaboration as well with uh, NGOs, that, uh, stakeholders, uh, business, government, and uh, develop sustainable solution of plastic. And they can work together to implement recycling programs and technologies and promote a sustainable practice. Uh, as well, we still have to take role in the education. If I mean by this education, we have to bring on our young uh, uh, agriculturalists in universities, college of educations, to even understand the plastic pollution, agricultural plastic pollution itself. We here in Nigeria and Africa is a new dimension. We will usually deal with the domestic plastic. We are not looking at the agricultural plastic. As I'm telling you now, we have more than uh, 80 to 100 million hectares here in Nigeria. Uh, some other foreign countries and neighboring countries are still coming into Nigeria to, to, to farm. With these, uh, we're practicing in the way of modern uh, technologies to bring on all these mulch farmings and all these farmings to Nigeria. So that's the reason we have to cut them here. We have to tackle it at the early stage. We don't have to. Uh, leave it to go far before we tackle this situation. So we have to look at the leadership. Young people have to take the leadership roles uh, in, their, in, in, in their communities to inspire others to take action, definitely, because if young people can play a very good role in the leadership, they understood the system, they understood the policies and everything. From their communities, they can implement that and the government can take over on the, on the policies. So the role of youth and generally, when it comes to uh, uh, finding a sustainable solution to use of plastic, I know young people can play an active role in protecting and improving the environment. So they can change their lifestyle and how it affects the environment. Youth are backbone of the nation. We all believe that and we all agree on that. And they can change the future of the society with their well-being and encourages behaviors by applying the green knowledge at home and schools. So we can help uh, to market a, a city, a greener uh, city environment. Youth role is to implement the recycling program for use of plastic, and you can arrange for collection services with them. So there are almost many collection points for recycling of plastic, so do not uh, simply throw them away. Youth have a role to play in the environmental and conversation effort that will improve the life world. So the role of youth in INC process, uh, where, which uh, we were part of the negotiation committee last year in uh, Uruguay, that's what we met with FAO there for the negotiation. So the issue of plastic uh, pollution globally challenges and requires the collective effort of all stakeholders, including youths, uh, young people, and children as well. The youths can uh, play a critical role in the intergovernmental negotiation of plastic pollution uh, in the following uh, ways. So these are me and my colleagues here in uh, Uruguay uh, following the process and giving more interventions and uh, innovative idea to tackle agricultural plastic pollution. So the role of youth in the INC so is to advocate and uh, create awareness where young people can advocate for policies and everything there, a uh, plastic pollution through awareness campaign and uh, social media uh, platforms. So research and innovations, bringing youth on board on this INC can help them to, to collaborate and come up with a very good researches and very good idea to tackle all the plastic pollutions as well and active uh, participation in negotiation uh, where young people can get an access to finance Funding to be in the INC can help a lot to, to 
to, to tackle on this and to get more opportunities on the conferences, to network and uh, have a very good uh, ideas and can directly ask a question from the stakeholder member of state and everything. So collaboration and partnership where young people can have an access to the for collaboration and partnership towards this. So young people uh, have a crucial role to play by the intergovernmental negotiation plastic extension to, include, to involve the empowerment of young people to this negotiation and show a future for all. So uh, yeah, thank you very much for my, uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Moussa, and thank you for your tenacity in coming back despite the, <laughs> the, the, the challenges you were facing. Uh, thank you for, again, also setting the scene, the type of pollution, the best practices that are being used in your country. But then I think what, what was really critical in your presentation was your, your focus on the crucial role of young people, young farmers, uh, in this uh, in this whole process, in the work in uh, Nigeria, in terms of innovation, advocacy, collaboration, education, and leadership uh, within the communities, but then also for highlighting the how you see the youth positioning uh, within the INC2 uh, process. And again, I would like to flag that all this, I mean, FAO has now for the last couple of years a platform where the youth has to play a critical role in the agri-food system transformation. This is the called the World Food Forum. There, the, this, it has events uh, all year long involving youth and especially a focus during the week of 16 of October, which is World Food Week, where there is a big gathering in Rome. Uh, with that, I think we have uh, concluded this uh, part of the, of the presentation. And I would now like to give the, the opportunity to our colleagues in the room uh, if they have questions uh, to ask these questions or comments, and uh, and then and then uh, also I uh, would like to say that while we were presenting the case studies, there has been a very rich uh, Q and A uh, session ongoing virtually, uh, and that we will make sure, of course, this is documented as part of what we will be posting on our website uh, after uh, the event. Uh, we have also received a number of questions, but I will give priority to colleagues here if they have some comments or questions. Sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, let me introduce myself. I am Emilio from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Chile. Um, I would like to thank for this uh, presentation uh, with Francisco, who is over there. We are in charge of the International Clinical Agenda. Um, we are focal point for the INC process from for Chile, we was in, I, I was in Punta del Este and I will be in, in Paris a couple of weeks more. Um, I would like that this kind of comment are very important input for us because we are in preparing the national position uh, uh, in relation to the INC2. And I have a lot of doubts in, in for that presentation, but I would like to make two questions. The first one is for Ronan. Uh, and I would like to know if they know the figure of waste pickers and if he has some kind of work with the waste picker because he, they are a very important part of the new treaty. And um, the other one is for Lev explain what is his, his vision regarding the potential element document for the INC2 and it will die sure, sorry. elements. Okay. It's a document who, who presented the secretariat for the INC2. And I would like to know um, <clears throat> what they expect for this meeting, not just related to the document, uh, maybe more general. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, sir, indeed. And I would like also to remind you, as my colleague, colleague Lev said, that there will be another session hosted at FAO headquarters uh, on the 25th of May. We will make sure that you get all the, the connection details uh, so that you are connected. But, but perhaps we can ask our, uh, our speakers. I know Mr. Ronan had to go but he has his colleague uh, who is there who, am, who may take the, the question on waste pickers, Co correct? Yes. Uh, sir? From Adi Valor. Speaking to me, okay. Yeah. 
I'm here. Okay. And wh what are the questions, please? If I understood correctly, whether you have uh, more information, data mm -hmm. on waste pickers, yes, which is a key the relation element. that they have with waste. Pickers. Yeah, the relation that you, Adivalor, have with the waste pickers, the collectors, I mean, the the, the dish. Okay, um, we have a close uh, close relation with the collector, which are uh, the, the distribution sector of agri supply. Uh, so we have um, we are twenty five in Adivalor, and we have uh, ten people uh, on the on the territory of France. So we have we have close relation. If uh, that's uh, the question, perhaps perhaps we can also connect you offline yes, so that yes. so that perhaps you can provide Thank Mr. Chanton. Uh, a bit more information. I don't know if if other colleagues, uh, for example, from Australia, uh, mm -hmm. Anne Marie or Isabel, you have information on that sort of uh, of uh, uh, the relations with the, the 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 waste pickers, which is a point of interest for our colleagues from the Mission of Chile. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I, I guess. Oh, Oh, I was just going to say, with, with the existing schemes such as drum muster, um, big bag recovery, so they're, they're schemes that are already in place, we have very strong relationships with the collectors. Um, it's, it's very much based on those relationships. Very good. Isabel, you wanted to add also? Uh, with with waste pickers, uh, just I think we might have slightly different terminology. Is it the uh, the collection or the processes that is of particular interest? The collection. The collection. The collection. There's there's in Australia there's probably a handful of uh, large scale collectors, but currently most of those aren't operating in agricultural plastics. So with uh, Australia being in its infancy of setting up uh, agricultural schemes on a wide scale, we have the ability to bring those together to, to create that, um, what Adivalor has described as quite a coordinated and integrated approach. Okay, early but big opportunity. <laughs> and Adivalor is a good model. <laughs> okay, great. Uh, so next, uh, Lev, there was a question addressed to you. Yes, thank you so much for this question. For sure, it's not easy. There is no easy answer to this because we are facing evolving process. Uh, Sorry. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, very well, Lev. Oh, good. Yes, we we certainly face evolving process in different uh, positions among countries and so on. And you know that the big, for sure, the big debate is: would it be a bottom-up treaty or top-down treaty? Are we following, let's say, uh, the Paris Agreement, or we are rather uh, following, let's say, Minamata uh, Minamata Treaty? But this is a big. It's sort of the generic uh, thing when it comes to agriculture. And, and again, I reiterate that uh, we are speaking, we cannot prejudge any position of individual members. I'm speaking as an observer. Um, first, I think what we brought to the first meeting, we will bring to the second one. I think in our context of agriculture, plastics has to be considered as an integral element of, if you wish, agricultural management, food, commodities production. So why we say plastics as a part of agri-food system, transformation towards sustainability. It's a material which has benefits, it has trade-offs, and there is no easy answer. So therefore, uh, we for sure, we will discuss with delegations um, why, why I bring to the, to the discussion this issue of sectoral approaches. Um, which is just emerging, emerging among uh, some members that they are saying that specificity of management requires a truly sort of whole sector approach. While there are uh, key principles, obviously we fully support them, the principles of circularity, 
the principles of reduction, if not elimination, of plastic pollution and adverse impacts of plastics, including in, used in agriculture and human health and the environment. This is uncontested sort of statements. The management uh, side of things, let's say, um, banning, substitution, and, and so on and so on, I think have to be discussed in the context of agriculture agricultural stakeholders from smallholder farmers to the ministries of agriculture to the ministry of science have to end ha as, as as you brought for example informal pickers which also uh, in in some instances would concern agricultural fields um, if it's informal sector um, they have to be consulted so therefore um, we believe that this discussion have to be made in the context of this, of our stakeholders, the agricultural stakeholders, while the treaty will provide uh, framing for this. Uh, but this is, it's my, uh, it's basically what we are, uh, we are bringing to the table and to conclude, um, as also I indicated in my presentation, what we hear from our colleagues um, across the house, um, that as, as you already see, uh, plastics concerns our constituency working on uh, soil pollution, food safety, food loss and waste, agricultural production. And again, sorry that I'm, we have my colleagues now from fisheries aquaculture, a huge issue with fishers and agriculture, with, uh, which has its own approaches and all, uh, yeah, own means to address the problem. So it's very, it's very important to have all these voices uh, somehow channeled uh, in the negotiations. And obviously these discussions are well familiar to agricultural stakeholders and may not be so well familiar uh, to environmental ministries and environmental stakeholders. That's a challenge we, we will have uh, as we go along with INC. I don't know if I answered uh, your question. It's okay. It's okay. okay, it's okay. It's okay. But we are certainly it's looking okay. very much forward. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, us, I mean, to my mind, uh, because now we are reaching almost the end of this discussion. It shows that, and we have about 100 participants online, it shows that this is an area of very high interest, uh, including for the, the Geneva-based community. Uh, so, uh, so we will not exhaust the topic. There has been plenty of questions in the Q&A. We will, we will collect all that, provide elements of response if needed, reaching out to the various panelists uh, so that we can provide a good summary in the in the next couple of days in the in you know on our web page and then we will discuss with our colleagues in rome but perhaps there might be a need for another discussion on that after the the paris uh the paris uh negotiation that will take place and again uh to to continue i would say feed uh discussion on that so uh i think uh, i would like really to to thank you all for, for this very rich and fruitful discussion. Uh, we hope, of course, that this event today uh, was useful. I mean, as you prepare for uh, INC2, uh, and, uh, and that you could get really the, the sense that FAO working with a number of partners is there as an observer to support you, the members, in, uh, in, this, in this work. We have uh, clear messages from experts within the sector about the importance that plastic products currently play in food security, but also their potential for harm if mismanaged. We have also heard that the sustainable management of plastic products and their waste on farm pose particular and complex problems that require sector-specific solutions. So we hope that uh, these messages will prove useful as you go to uh, INC2. And I would like to make a, a small commercial here uh, <laughs> to say that, that uh, basically, uh, you know, 
FAO office in Geneva. We are now trying to be uh, working with our colleagues from the the the, the environment, the office of KV from uh, of, office of environment and climate. Uh, working, we are trying to really beef up out of Geneva our environment uh, engagement. There will be a number of events in the coming week. The most immediate, very important, being the celebration of the World B Day on the 20th of May. Uh, and to uh, mark this important event, we'll be organizing an event on Tuesday, 16 May, uh, in collaboration with the permanent missions of Slovenia, Switzerland, and the uh, office of the UN in, uh, in Geneva. And the theme of this year's discussion will be money for empowerment. Uh, so you are you are all welcome to attend this. I mean, uh, don't underestimate the, the role of bees in uh, as pollinators. And uh, so you are all welcome to join us on in building H at eleven thirty on Tuesday, sixteen uh, of uh, of May. So with that, I only have left. To thank, of course, really super grateful to our uh, speakers uh, today, our panelists, especially for uh, Anne Marie and Isabel. We know it's very late in uh, in Australia, uh, but thank you for being with us, and uh, thank you also, colleagues from Adivalo, uh, Mr. Musa, for bringing the, the youth voice and Lev, of course, and I feel important. So thank you so much, and we look forward. To engagement with you. Good evening. Hi, my name is Chris. I don't know if we met before, but I was in uh, Uruguay. Actually, I